Welcome to Tech Bike Parts. Today we're going to be fitting a, a front fork spring and adjuster upgrade kit to this Yamaha MT-07. These are great little bikes but they have very basic suspension on them. It's always a good idea when fitting suspension to get you, you know, some reference points of where you're working from. So what I normally do on, on, a, on a bike is get an idea of what the static ride height is with the, the original setup. So what you do is you basically put the, the weight onto the bike and put a marker, I, I normally use a, a, a marker pen to put a line around the forks and then when you take the weight off you can see where the bike normally sits. Now that, that is your standard ride height setting. Now we'll come back to that again later on when we're adjusting the bike so you, you've got a reference point to, to somewhere you can start from. Now on these bikes, they're very difficult to support, they don't have a centre stand and we need to get the weight off the front end. So you're going to need to use a, a, a trolley jack or a, a, a bike jack, something like this and just put it underneath the engine so you can... you don't actually don't have any frame tubes on these so all you can do is support it on the engine. It, all you need is off the ground, just enough to take the weight off the front wheel let really that much that's all we need right first of all we need to loosen the handlebars just slightly so we can slide them across now you've got four handlebar mounting 10 mil headed bolts at the front here on the MT-07 and at the back you can normally get into them but if you find it's a bit difficult um, you can loosen the clocks off just to get in a bit better but you can normally get in with an open-ended spanner and just loosen that off there. So once you've loosened all four of those it's a good idea to put something over the tank to protect your paintwork so you don't get a nasty scratch. So that's all those loosened there now. Now you need to loosen your master cylinder off. You take the two little allen bolts off the clamp and just swing that out of the way. It's just so we can get access to get the spring and the spacer out of the tube. And that's basically all the access you need. You can actually just get in there now. And I notice you've taken the, um, the wing mirror off as well. Yes, I took, on this one I had to because it's got hand guards on. Right, so you need a 22mm spanner to take the, the original cap off. You'll need a 27 to put the new cap on. So you literally just unscrew this. Will the spring be under tension? No, the, the very, very slightly maybe, but it's with, when you've got the weight off the front wheel, it's, it shouldn't be under any great load. Right, once we've got the nut off, you've got a spacer tube in there. Let me just pull that out and put it to one side. Now you need a, a magnet, one of these extending magnets is really handy for this. You see you've got a, a steel shim that fits on top of the spring and you take that out and now your spring. Now if you just bring the spring up near the top and hold it there for a few seconds to let the oil drain off it. I'll now show you the difference between the standard spring and the spring that we're going to put in. So these are the new springs we're going to install. You can see they've got variable windings on them. This gives them a progressive rate. Now you also notice that on the, on the standard ones that they're the same all the way up and down. And you also notice on the standard ones they're slightly longer. Now this is to accommodate the fact that these caps are slightly longer as well. So that's the, the length of the standard cap and that's the, the length of the new cap. You can see even in the fully up position 
it's slightly longer. Now ideally what we want is for your, the mi middle setting which that one's set at to be the same right height as, as what the standard spring setup is. So that will give you the difference in length of the spring is equivalent to where it is in the centre setting there. Okay, so we, we put the, the, the spring in first of all. We split it in with the tight windings at the top. So basically we just drop that into the tube now. Next we put the washer in. Now what you've got to watch for when you put the washer in is that it's sitting top up, flat on top of the spring. Because otherwise if it's sitting up like that it can jam in the tube and damage the tube. So just have a quick look down. If it's not, just get a long screw. Down. That, that one's actually gone in there nice and flat. Um, I can't really... Yeah, you will see that. There's not enough light. Yeah. See it now. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Perfect. Next, slide the tube in. Now you'll notice that the tube is sitting lower down the, the, the fork. This is obviously to allow for the um, adjustment. Whereas the old, the, with the old spring it was sitting level at the top, now it's sitting further in. Now it's just, just a matter of screwing the fork top on. You have to be careful not to cross thread it because these are just aluminium. If it's not going in easily, just double check that you've got you've got the threads in right. Now you, you need a 27 millimeter spanner to tighten this up. Now you need to wind, if you're going to go back to standard right height, you need to wind this in halfway. And that will then give you equal adjustment for up and down. So you've got about 8mm of raise in the front, or 8mm of drop in the front from stock. And this is where your mark comes in handy as a reference for where your standard uh, static squish was on the spring. So that's about halfway there. Okay, so we'll let it off the, the stand and check the... Right, so as you can see there, there's the line where the static right height was before. So now if we take the, sus the weight off the suspension, you can see it's just gone down to where the line was again, so that's absolutely spot on. So that's your standard right height it's set at again. And like I say, if you want more pressure on the front, that makes the forks longer, which gives you more stability. Um, and if you, you wind it off, it drops the front forks down. And that makes the front end turn in faster because it puts more weight onto the front tyre and also reduces the trail. So just try doing that in small increments once, you, once you've ridden the bike for a bit and you, you'll feel the difference straight away. But you also get a, a much better ride with the progressive nature of the fork springs and you won't get as much dive under braking. So that's all the right side finished. So basically all you need to do is repeat what we've done there on the left side and then put the handlebars back together and take the bike out for a ride with the, the standard right height setting. You will feel a difference straight away because of the progressive nature of the springs. But like I say, if you, if you want a bit more grip on the front end and a bit more turn in, reduce the wind the um, adjusters out to drop the front end down a little bit. Take some of the preload off the spring. Now, preload and right height get confused. 
Preload on a spring is effectively all you're doing is jacking the bike up and down. You're not changing the rate of the spring, you're not putting any more load on the spring. All you're doing is lifting the, the bike up and down. It, when you understand that, you can understand exactly what's happening. If you lift the front of the bike, the trail goes out a little bit and makes the turn in slower. It makes the bike more stable, but it'll, it'll not feel as sporty to ride. If you, if you wind it so that the front end shorter, if you, if you wind it out, it, it, um, it, it reduces the trail and puts more weight onto the front end and gives you more grip on the tyre, but it's not as stable at speed. So it's getting a balance where you're happy with the handling of the bike. Now, we, can, we also do fork emulators for this model as well. Now, I've already done quite a detailed video on fitting the fork emulators into the Triumph um, Street Twins, Street Scramblers, Bonnevilles. Now, they're basically the same forks on those, so I'm not going to go into it and do it again. So if you watch the Triumph Bonneville video on how to fit fork emulators, it, it's exactly the same. So, um, like I say, it's pointless me doing it again and repeating myself all over again. Okay. So we're going to bring some more stuff out for the MT-07 uh, later on in the year. We're, we're looking at uh, Santa Stand, a few other bits. It's a nice little bike. We like these. We don't normally do much in the way of job bikes. We're mostly trying, but I, I particularly like this model. It, it, it's, a, it's a good, fun bike. So thanks for now, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.